so before we, um, Half Moon is way further into our sequencing today, but I did want to give a, a few little cues ahead of time. So when we come into Half Moon, generally our hand that's on the floor is a little, um, let me back up a little more, is usually forward off our mat and a little to the side, um, not in alignment with our foot, just to make a bicycle kickstand sort of effect. But if you're really um, playful in your uh, balance here, it is kind of fun to begin to move hand in alignment with your foot, greatly challenges your center of gravity. Any variation y'all might have here, you might play with little hinges, or even your half bow. Okay, so I just wanted to throw that out there to be beforehand because once we're in the pose, it's hard to really absorb all that and look at me and not fall over. <laughs> so uh, make sure you have um, your blanket or your block ready to go. We are going to start out in um, either supported bridge or supported fish. Um, as Jennifer was pointing out earlier, a lot of people are sitting more now. So supported fish might truly be your friend here. When you sit, just place the um, blanket between your shoulder blades sideways and then let your head fall back. If you feel like your neck is arching too much, you can either flatten the blanket a little more or place another blanket up under your head. You just don't want to have an extreme arch in your neck as we begin. Okay, we haven't warmed up the spine at all. If you need a little movement before you come into this, feel free to find that first. Otherwise, you can lay on your back, lift your hips, and place the blanket or whatever prop you have up under your hips. Okay, not your lower back, it's your hips. Wiggle around a little. Um, you want this to be sustainable. You don't want to aggravate your lower back. So you might start with your knees bent, feet wide on the mat and just let the knees touch. Or you might have the feet touching the knees wide like um, reclining bound angle, but that might be a little too much on the hips. You can even play with the legs long. That can really um, extend more through the lower back. So be careful. Wiggle and squiggle as much as you need to to find a comfortable place. And when you're ready, have a nice big inhale through your nose, exhale, sigh it out through your mouth. Ah. Soften your gaze and just have an initial melt where you allow the body to melt over your prop a little bit. Just feel it kind of soften. And we'll begin to awaken our ujjayi breathing, deeply breathing in and out through our noses, constricting the back of your throat. Allowing the breath to become a soothing ocean wave sound. Maybe Darth Vader if you're a Star Wars fan. Yes. Just tune into the breath. Watch it from beginning to end. And if you can truly do that, you'll begin to feel the busyness of the mind, the stressors all melt away. And you're just beginning to tune in. On the inhales, you might just focus on the broadening of the chest or the expansion you feel through the body with the energy. The exhales, a slow receive back to the pelvic floor. You just have to find what interests you. Maybe you like to watch the energy of the breath travel up and down the spine. And do you truly pause with the pauses between the inhales and the exhales? Remember, that's part of the transition when we have our physical practice. We want to focus on the transitions just as much as the pose itself. So when you're ready, let's inhale, reach our arms wide, bring our hands together, exhale, hands to heart center. Spend a few breaths here, feeling the rise and the fall, the beautiful energy within. And we'll take this moment to set our intention for our practice. So no hurry, when you're done, just mindfully remove your prop if you have it. Maybe set it near the top of your mat to the side. We'll draw our knees in, flex our feet, draw the knees wide, and give resistance as we draw the knees side to side. And look opposite your knees. 
since we're at home and we can get easily distracted about our surroundings, when you can, close your eyes. That's comfortable. And that allows you, once again, to tune in and feel this beautiful massage you're getting. Knees further away, does more of the hips and the lower back. Knees more into the chest, does more of the mid back. What do you need today? All right. So we're going to work our way to tabletop hands and knees. Maybe a little leg roll, rock and roll, if that feels good. And when you're ready, hands and knees, tabletop. I bring that left hand over here with me. Fingers spread wide, wrists straight down from shoulders. Give your feet a pat. Welcome the top of your feet to your foundation. Engaging pelvic floor belly. Soften your gaze if you can as you begin to move slowly through cat and cow. Press away, belly to the spine. Once again, just because we kind of did an abrupt transition, tune in with the breath. Feel the breath sink up with the movement. And as you begin to warm up, recognize if you would like to get a little freestyle or organic, you can sink you back to the child's pose. Just feeling the body begin to move, remembering that motion is like lotion for the body. We all know about that when we sit still for a long time and you get up and you go, oh, 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 parts don't want to move. <laughs> so this is a good thing. All right. We will be extending our legs out to the side in a moment. So if you need to readjust and make a little room, do so, okay? All right, so we're going to pause here in neutral spine, tabletop, and on an inhale, extend our right leg back. Point the toes down, level your right hip. Recognize if you're beginning to bend the elbows and sink towards the earth. Press away for those arms hug. If it's available, float your left arm forward, press away from the earth and reach. Inhale, exhale, take one or both out to the side. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee to nose. Maybe tuck the chin, belly to spine. You can keep the hand down if you like. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take it out. Lift from the hip, reach through the heel. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee to nose. One more round. Just move with your breath as slowly or quickly as you like through this. After this third knee to nose, we'll inhale, lengthen. We'll bend the knee in the air. And reach the hand back for that big toe side of the foot. Curl the toe back onto the hand. If you don't find the foot, maybe both hands down, flex the foot and pulse the heel. But do it with um, resistance. Don't just sling it. Really resist it. If you have the foot, maybe look to the left and up. Press away from the earth. And then our hand will come down. We'll exhale, cross the knee behind the other. Lay the feet wide, walk your hands just a little to the right, still on the mat, and exhale, let the hips go back as far as they want. So if you need to move your hands back, do so. You might choose to just hang out and be soft or make it dynamic. Come up on spider fingers, elbows off the floor, squeeze the legs, open the toes, belly through the spine, and breathe. Give yourself a few breaths, just relax. You can always draw the nose around a little. And maybe after a few breaths, you begin to feel the hips maybe soften a little bit or sink a little further back. Nice stretch here. It's really good. On your next inhale, round it up, control as you can. Back to tabletop, feel the transition. Set the foundation, engage. And inhale, extend left leg up and back. Point the toes down, level the hip, press away. Float the right arm forward. Inhale, exhale, one or both, out to the side. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, knee to nose. Two more rounds. Try to fight the wiggling. Try to isolate the movements. Wiggling is good, but your core really working. So the more you can isolate it, the deeper the core is working. After your third knee to nose, we'll inhale, lengthen, bend that knee, seek the big toe side of the foot, curl the toe back, activate it. Once again, maybe pulse the foot, maybe look to the right and up. Really press the foot into the hand and vice versa, a nice balanced tension. We'll bring the hand down, exhale, cross the knee behind the other, splay the feet wide. Hands a little to the left, but use an exhale to take the hips back. 
allowing some of that initial tension to just melt away with the exhale. And breathe, softness or activation, spider fingers. Deep breathing in this closed off space, tuning into what you see and feel, the sensations within. And on our next inhale, we'll slowly round it on up. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna work our way to Sphinx Pose. So we're going to go ahead, maybe extend our legs back and come on down to our bellies. Give your hips a little wiggle. That's a nice transition to release the lower back. Then we'll come on up on our elbows, ensuring that they're shoulder width apart. Make sure maybe the fingers touch outside the arms and the elbows are straight down from the shoulders. Finger, hands come forward, fingers spread wide. We're gonna use those fingertips just like you would in plank. Draw the elbows back and inhale, lift the heart. Feel the hip points energetically drawing forward as the elbows draw back. Breathing, you might stay here. Building some heat, you can always stay here or return here. On an exhale, you might press to the knees, round it up into a cat back. Inhale, wave it forward to the sphinx. Try to sink the movement up with the breath. Belly through the spine. Yes, three more. If I do these two days in a row, I really feel it in my abdominals. So really working deeply here. Nice fluid movement. All right. So once we find Sphinx Pose again, we'll lower our chest down, hands by the heart, give the shoulders a little roll, elbows back and in. Curl your toes under and we'll exhale, meet our down dog. Now check in, I always walk my feet just a smidgen closer forward. Feels better on my body, but also bending the knees can greatly assist the legs, the shoulders, the back, especially when we're not quite as warmed up yet. So take a moment and always check in with that. It's bending the knees a little, making your body feel a little more space, a little less aggravated tension. Maybe drop a knee and a hip in, pause there, lift the hips up and back, get that stretch through that one hip. Feels really good too. Beautiful. We'll find down dog, maybe side out through the mouth or exhale out the mouth. All right, we're working our way, feet between hands, looking towards your hands, walk, tippy toes, step or float, feet between hands. Inhale, look forward, find space. So press away from the shins or the floor and feel the shoulders drop from the ears. Looking straight down, we're holding this, guys. The belly's through the spine. Can you hollow out the belly anymore? And feel the spine telescope. Your mid-back's pressing to the sky and you're breathing. One more inhale and with our exhale, we'll fold, forward fold. Soften those knees a little extra, maybe. And we'll inhale, reverse it on up. A little counter pose, you might lift from the heart. And exhale, fold. All right, so if you have a hard time touching the floor here, get a prop, all right? We're gonna inhale to flat back and bring your left hand somewhat forward. See how my arm is more forward? That's gonna allow the left side body to open up. And with an exhale, take your right arm to the sky. You can bend your left knee as much as you like, all right? And from here, wherever you are, if you're bending the knee or not, pull your left hip crease back. Feel that side body open up. Maybe try looking down towards your grounded hand, a little forward of that, an opposing spiral for the spine. Some nice twisting in your breathing. If you need a little movement in that lifted arm, do so. And with your next exhale, just feel the wave, the surrender into your forward fold. Ah. Inhale, flat back, bring that right hand somewhat forward, spider fingers, and exhale, left hand to sky. Once again, you can bend that right knee. But wherever you are, pull that right hip crease back. Might feel good to look up, but just try on looking down. Try it on. And who doesn't like more twisting in the spine, right? Breathing, breathing. And with our next exhale, we're going to fold forward, fold. Inhale, look forward. Find some space. Shift your weight to your left foot. Have control. Can you reach your right leg back to lunge? Breathing here, pull that left hip crease back, a bit of flat back, maybe a playful hinge, we'll inhale it up. 
that's so much. All right, we'll exhale, reach, take our hands down. We're working our way back to forward fold, maybe lift that leg high and release it down. All right, inhale, look forward, shift your weight to the right foot, have control, can your left leg go back? Pause, maybe that playful hinge if it's available. And on an inhale, lift it up, press it lunge. Feel the shoulders soften from the ears. Inhale again and exhale, reach. Working our way to forward fold, maybe lift that leg high and release it down. Oh. Inhale, look forward and find space and exhale, fold. Hands to the floor, looking forward, strong neck, step or float. Going through your vinyasa. If you need to modify lowering the knees or even just lower that pelvis straight down into your cobra, do so. Make it yours. Audible exhale, just let it go. So from here, we're going into Turbo Dog. We're gonna bend our knees as deeply as we can and bring our chest towards our thighs. You've gotta really press through those fingers and hug the arms so the hands don't slide and breathe. Trying to keep the chest in as deeply as you can as you inhale, straighten the legs and exhale, make the side out. Uh, all right, this time when we come forward, we want our feet Outside our hands are wider than our mat. So looking towards your hands, walk, step, or float. Feet nice and wide. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. We're going to come up, but if you need your towel for your hands, take time to get it. Inhale, reverse it on up. Exhale, let's take our hands behind, interlacing, or with towel. Inhale, lift from the heart. Knees are soft as we exhale, slowly wave it into a forward fold. Take a moment here, feel the upper arms hugging, the fingers squeezing. Maybe bend the knees and straighten the legs or even bend side to side. Breathing, if it's too much tension on the shoulders, you can always release the hands, but lower them to the lower back first. All right, maybe you just wanna hang out in stillness. Pelvic floor, belly strong, feel the hips lift. You might just try bending the knees a little extra and see if your spine can drape a little more. Yeah, allowing a little more space there. All right, we'll bring our hands to our lower back first, and then we'll let our arms drape to gravity. That's really sweetness, maybe give your shoulders a little roll. All right, walk, step, or float your feet back onto the mat. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Hands to the floor, looking forward, step or float, going to your vinyasa. Leading in, down dog. Nice exhale, let it go. Ah. All right. So I'm just gonna play with your mind a little bit. We're gonna do our left side first. Ah. The left leg to sky. Exhale, slowly knee to nose, tuck the chin, maybe touch that nose back, heel lifts high, you always need hands and knees. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, knee to nose again, can you touch it? Look forward, how controlled can that foot come inside your left hand? Ooh, nice. A Little bit of flat back here, and we'll inhale up, crescent lunge. Nice, feel the shoulders soften. So remember, you always want the back heel lifted straight up and back. If the heel angles to one side, you're gonna feel like you're gonna fall to that side. All right, so from here on an exhale, we're gonna fly our arms back. Yes, draw the shoulders from the ear. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Keep that nice bend in the front knee. Inhale back up. Exhale, reach, feel the space here, no hurry. Step back, vinyasa. Exhale, meeting in that down dog. All right, so from here, we'll lift our heels high and slowly work our way to hands and knees. We're gonna work our way to gate pose and we will have another opportunity for full side plank and you can also do it in this pose too. Take your left foot out to the side so it's pointing 90 degrees to your left. Left hand comes a little forward and right leg goes long. You're on the inside edge of your right foot. Everything should be in a straight line, left hand, knee, and right foot. Right hand to hip, press the shoulders back. 
Really sink everything into midline and then float your right arm up. If anybody wants to extend that left leg back to full side plank, feel free to keep the toes open, hips lifted. From here, looking down towards your grounded hand, maybe reach your right arm past your ear. Feel that stretch. If it would feel good, maybe lift that right leg. Press away from the earth, feel everything peel open, you're breathing. Nice. All right, we'll take it on down, tabletop, curl the toes under, exhale, down dog. Nice, that felt good stretch, beautiful. So from here, we'll inhale, right leg to sky. Exhale, knee to nose, tuck the chin. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, knee to nose, enjoy the pause, look forward, have control, can you set that foot down and all the way inside the hand. Flat back. Take a moment, feel the foundation, and enjoy that inhale as you float it on up. So just pausing, really connecting with the quality of the foundation everywhere you go. The upper body feels secure and free. Nice. One more inhale and we'll exhale, hinge at the hips as we just lean a little forward, but we're still pressing our mid back to the sky. So we're not sinking our chest towards the earth. Maybe bend the knee a little more on the front. Just feel that extra activation. Then we'll inhale both arms up. Exhale, reach, reach, reach. Step back, vinyasa. Or not. Everything's always maybe or maybe not. Remember that. Know where you are in the moment. You need a transition or a break or you get a little cramp. So let's lift our heels high. And then work our way to hands and knees. Take our right foot out to the side, right hand a little forward, and left foot long. Left hand to hip, press the shoulders back. Feel that core activate, then float the left arm up. That's the cherry on top right there. That's not the pose, it's how you get there. So maybe reach that left arm past your ear. Maybe lift the left leg. Toes are active. And breathe. Hearts lifting and rotating to the left. You can look up if it feels good towards your hand or down. It's what feels good to you. Looking down always helps with balance. And then hand down, nice. Exhale, down dog. Pedal it out. All right, in a moment, we'll be working our way to forward fold. And when we get there, we want our big toes touching. So when you're ready, walk, step, or float, feet between hands. Inhale, look forward and find space, flat back. And exhale, fold all the way to the crown of the head. Take a moment here, feel what's going on, pelvic floor belly strong, the drape of the spine to the crown of the head. I have spider fingers, that actually activates my chest and back a little more. Think you can soften, do so. All right, we're gonna inhale, reverse it on up. Take your time. You might do a little back bend at first just for a counter pose. Then we'll straighten up, shift into our heels and exhale into our chair. Shift the hips back. Breathe into your upper back. Feel how that lifts the chest. Maybe sink down a little deeper. Hands to heart. Inhale and always exhaling with the twist, left arm outside the right leg. All right, so look and see if your left knee is drifting forward. Either way, pull the left hip crease back. Feel the rib cage now open up more balance on each side. Maybe lower the hips a little. Use your arm to press away from the leg and maybe you can open your heart a little more to the side without cranking. Once again, you can look to the side, up or down, opposing spiral. Those of you that might have a side crow here, feel free to go. If not, if joints allow, maybe spider fingers forward, begin to lift the heels and come into a deep squat. You want to squeeze the legs together, press the shoulders back, maybe bring hands to heart. Maybe you can find that left arm outside the right leg. Maybe you even just play with building the foundation of your side crow. Yes, shifting forward helps lift those hips. All right. Beautiful. If you can, just a few more breaths. Hanging out with 
hands to heart, heels lifted. Great strengthening and stretching for the feet and the ankles. Then we'll bring our spider fingers to the floor and our knees are gonna have a party as we exhale into forward fold. Oh yeah, dig into your feet. But no apologies, if your joints can't handle that, your toes or your ankles, just find some nice chair movement here and play with that twist, right? Beautiful. So from here, we're gonna inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold, bend our knees deeply and inhale, lift heart and arms to chair again. And we're gonna switch sides here. Shift into the heels so the toes might lift a little, breathe into the upper back. If this goes into the lower back, chances are you're hinging too far forward and you're not lifting from the heart. You can always bring hands to hips if you need to or arms wider. Hands to heart. Inhale and we'll exhale, right arm outside the left. Maybe give a visual check. Is that right knee drifting forward? But once again, either way, pull the right hip crease back. Feel the spine telescope. Maybe lower the hips a little more. Oh yeah. Press away from the leg and with an exhale, you might twist a little more. And breathe into this sweet detoxing twist. You can always return here, find a forward fold. Maybe straight into your side crow or spider fingers forward. Lift the heels slowly. Look forward a bit, squeeze the legs, zip it up, press the shoulders back. Maybe hands to heart, you might just work on balance here. You might need to keep fingers down. Maybe find that revolve right to the left here. Or that side crow. Breathing. Lots of options today. Find your happy place. When you are ready, maybe you can hang here with the heels lifted a little longer. We're about to hit summer where we wear naughty bad flip-flop shoes and we need to keep those feet healthy. We don't want plantar fasciitis. And when you're ready, just exhale, find a nice forward fold. Let the body respond and talk to you. What kind of movement or stillness do you need here? <laughs> All right, let's inhale, look forward and find space along the spine. And exhale, fold as you step or float, strong neck, look forward, going through vinyasa. Remember, let it be your vinyasa. Know where you feel strong and you can enjoy moving with your breath. Ha. Take a moment here in down dog. Maybe soften your gaze. Make sure your arms are hugging towards your ears, yet the triceps are rolling to the side and back towards the thighs. All right, inhale, right leg to sky. Feel the space, fingertips to the lifted leg. Exhale, slowly knee to nose. Lift the back heel high, maybe touch the knee. Look forward, set your foot inside your hand. And pause, flat back, engaging the core. We're gonna slowly shift to warrior one foot. So bring that back foot a little forward and more to the left, toes mostly forward. Pull your right hip crease back, press to the back heel, and can you find a playful hinge? Feel those strong legs. Maybe you need your hands to your thigh, that's okay. But pause and on an inhale, feel that smooth transition as you come up. Exhale, soften the shoulders from the ears. Let's deepen it a little. Press to the back heel, spiral your left thigh forward. Feel the hips energetically squaring. Maybe you bend the front knee a little more. Nice. All right, so we're gonna work on some balance. All right, first we're gonna to press to that back heel and reach. If that's too much for your lower back, maybe hands to the waist or the hips. All right, and so from here, we're going to shift into warrior three. You might even interlace the hands, point your fingers. Lift the back heel, pause. Feel yourself shift onto that front foot. And then keep that back leg active as you hinge at your right hip. Once you find the edge of your hinge, Try to just expand from the lifted leg either to the crown of the head or the hands. Breathe. I'm really wiggling on the carpet here. It's a good thing. Take your time. How controlled can you reach it back to that warrior one foot? Feel the foundation, then inhale the arms up. Exhale, reach as you take it all the way down. Vinyasa, meeting in, down dog. Ah. 
Let it go. So I'm gonna do the left side here first. We're gonna to go to side plank, and if you need to lower that left knee for gait, do so. We're gonna inhale slowly, wave it to plank. Maybe bring your left hand a little forward, roll to the left side of the feet. Open the toes, right hand to hip. So try not to flatten that right foot to the floor, even get on the edge of that right foot. Press the shoulders back, float that right arm up. Lift those hips, breathing. Maybe reach that right arm past your ear again. You might even lift that right leg. And peel it open. And then we'll exhale, take it down. Down dog, maybe sigh it out or move it out. Kind of with, oh, beautiful. I'm so grateful for having you here today. Certainly lifting my spirits. Inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, slowly knee to nose. Hold it there. Out control. Can you get that foot inside your left hand? And pause, flat back. Remember that transfers weight through the body, engaging the core, protecting. The back foot comes a little forward and more to the right. Toes mostly forward. Pull the left hip crease back. Maybe a playful hinge. Press to that back foot. Feel the quality here and it calms you down. And then when you inhale up, the transition is even sweeter. Exhale, soften the shoulders from the ears. Press to the back heel, spiral that right thigh forward, maybe deepen the lunge a little. Feel that sweeter stretch on that right leg. And breathe. So you know your back, you know your balance. Maybe you need hands to hips. But on an exhale, can you hinge first and heel long, either from the fingers or the crown of the head to the heel. Shift forward. Lift the back heel, feel that back leg active. And begin to press into that left foot. You want to interlace those hands again. Press through that mound behind the big toe. Try not to roll to the outside edge of the pinky toe. Take your time as you slowly begin to bend that front knee. How controlled can you reach that back foot back? And then inhale the arms up. Exhale, reach as you take it down. Vinyasa or not. We'll take a break here in a moment after this side plank. A little sip of water maybe. A little tuning in moment. Audible exhale, let it go and down dog. Inhale, wave it to plank slowly. Right hand a little forward, roll to the right side of the feet, maybe lower that right knee. Press the shoulders back, then float the arm up. So you want to zip everything into the core before you take that arm up. That arm up is just a finishing touch. Toes are open on both feet. Maybe reach that left arm past the ear. Maybe reach the left leg up. Lift those hips and breathe and smile. Whole body strengthening here. Hand comes down, exhale down dog. Lift your heels high and tippy toe feet between hips. If you have to bend the knees or lift fingers, do so. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. If you're really deep in your forward fold, maybe keep your feet where they are. But I like to take my feet a little wider, as wide as the mat. Just giving my hamstrings, my back, a little more space. Maybe it's your shoulders that need it. You can always massage. You can bend the knees and straighten. You can hug yourself in or hold out the elbow and swish. What are you craving right now? Pelvic floor, belly strong. Maybe bend the knees a little extra or bend them and straighten, bend and straighten. Just let it be what it is. All right, we are gonna bend our knees a bit, let our arms straight to gravity, even the fingertips and slowly round it up. Let those fingers be heavy as they drip. Take your time, and once you do get to the top, give your shoulders a few rolls. Maybe you even have a ha oh moment. I always do. Maybe a little sip of water. I need one for my throat. Mm. Have the little heater going on so it dries out the room quite a bit. Mm. All right. So we will be working our way to that half moon in this pose. Or maybe when you open it up, Joe, you'll feel like you're in a full moon. <laughs> okay, so if you do need a couple blocks or a couple books, 
for that support just so you don't feel like you can't reach something to press away because that's what you're looking for is to press away and not sink into that grounded hand all right so let's come to the top of our mat we'll begin with sun salutation a meaning in down dog inhaling arms up and exhale fold maybe bend the knees check in with the back inhale look forward and find space and exhale, fold as you step or float, going through your vinyasa. And again, down dog. Nice. And so from here, we're going to inhale right leg to sky. Exhale, slowly knee to nose. Take your time, tuck your chin. Inhale it up again, and I just realized I want to open it up. So let's bend that knee in the air, reach for our left shoulder. Press more through the right hand, feel that extra activation and stretch. You might draw circles with the toes or even change the focal point, but breathe. You're in a half inversion here. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, knee to nose. Hop control, can you set the foot inside your hand? Hop, flat back. Spin your back heel down sideways, heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. Bend the front knee. Try to keep the leg still as you can. Reach that left arm forward, peel it open. You might need to bring your right arm to the thigh, or maybe you can play with a little hinge here. Added challenge is to watch your left fingertips as you windmill it up. Or your two. Alrighty, let's track that front knee towards the pinky toe. Maybe stir the pot a few times with that right knee. Like you're just drawing circles with it. And then keep that knee tracking towards the pinky toe. Feel your left hip roll back to the side and all the way through the outside edge of that pinky toe foot. Yes, and feel the hips just kind of open up a little bit. Zip it up, shoulders from the ears. Feel yourself press into that left rib cage. Reach fingertip to fingertip. And if it would feel good, maybe deep in the lunge a little. All right, and make sure you're feeling that engagement like you're closing your hip points like a book. Feel that extra engagement in the lower abdominals. Really key for what goes on with the tailbone there. Breathing, the tension builds, wiggle the fingers or rotate the wrists. Recognize your body and tune in when you need a little transition. Right hand to sky, and exhale back, peaceful warrior. You might bend one elbow or both. It's okay if you don't touch your fingers. But wherever you are, lift from your heart up and out of the spine. Try not to compress into the spine. Beautiful. And we're going to inhale up warrior two. I like to straighten both legs here. So you might shorten your distance of your feet a little bit, a little closer. All right, and this is where we'll transition into half moon. I'm going to do it towards you because we want to feel like we're being pressed between two pieces of glass, too. So you might bring left hand to hip to help with balance. We're going to bend our right knee, begin to shift onto that right foot. You might need to bring your right hand down straight away. And once again, maybe track it a little to the right like a kickstand. Lifted leg is strong. Looking down helps with balance. You change your focal point last. You might begin to track your hand more in alignment with the foot. You might even slowly track your gaze to the left and then maybe up towards your hand, changing that center of gravity, really amps it up. Breathing, heart is lifting to the side. Beautiful. Toes are open, begin to bend that right knee. We're gonna reach it back, warrior two. How controlled can you do so? Inhaling up. Exhale, take both hands down. Going through vinyasa, or just knee to down dog. Nice. So I hope some of you are on carpet like me, getting that extra challenge. <laughs> Ooh, it's good stuff. And all you can do is smile when you fall out of it. It's okay. Nice exhale, let it go. Inhale, left leg to sky. I haven't forgotten, exhale, knee to nose. Inhale it up and we'll exhale, bend that knee in the air, reach for our right shoulder. Press more to the left hand. Feel it, maybe draw circles with the toes. Feel that, sweetness. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, knee to nose. And set your foot inside your hand, flat back, pause. 
Extend the back heel down sideways, heel to heel, heel to arch, maybe reach that right arm forward, left arm to thigh or a playful hinge. And then on an inhale, windmill it over. And exhale, soften the shoulders to the ears. Maybe stir the pot once again with that front knee. And then track the knee to the left, roll to the outside edge of the right foot. Zip it up, press into the right rib cage. Engage those hip points. Maybe lower the hips. Maybe not. And breathe. Feel the spine telescope. Feel that balance reach hand to hand. Not too much tension through the hands. That can create tension all the way to the neck. Left hand to sky, and we'll exhale back, peaceful warrior. Maybe bend one elbow or both. Lift from the heart. Then we'll inhale up, warrior two, straightening both legs. Maybe shift the feet a little closer. Take your time as you bend the front knee. Maybe right hand to hip to help with balance. As we shift onto that front foot, maybe hand comes down right away or onto a prop. Your grounded foot, the toes should be pointed forward. Exhale, open the heart more to the side, maybe stacking shoulders and hips more. If you change your focal point quickly, chances are you'll fall out. Maybe work that left hand more in alignment with the left foot. Feel that change of center. Maybe play with your hinge or half bow. All right, lifted leg is active, toes open, begin to bend that left knee. How controlled can you reach your back warrior two feet? Inhale up. Nice. Exhale, take it down, vinyasa. All right, nice exhale. In this sequence, we will be working towards pigeons, so make sure your blankets, Pillows, everything are nearby. All right, let's um, maybe have an optional vinyasa here. If it just helps you calm down a little before we move. I always offer optional vinyasas, a little extra. Audible exhale once again. Hands and knees if you need it. Inhale, right leg to sky. And we'll exhale, bend that knee in the air. Reach your toes to the left shoulder. Press through the right hand. The more you reach through your right hand helps to counterbalance the flip of the dog. So if you choose to flip, really reach through that right side body. Feel that control. Press to the heels, squeeze the glutes and the inner thighs and breathe. Three breaths if you can, press away from the earth. And then look back, reach. Use the right side body as you inhale, unflip your dog. Exhale, knee to nose, tuck the chin. Inhale it up again. Exhale, knee to nose. Look forward. Can you bring that knee behind the right wrist and wider than the wrist? All right, so that's kind of deep for some of us. But as soon as you begin to slide the back leg back, if that front foot readjusts, allow it. That's your joint self-adjusting, all right? Pause a moment, feel centered. And then wedge in your prop, maybe up under the hip. That's gonna help you find a stretch sooner. And then once again, pause again, feel centered. If it's still too tight and you need, a little, need to lean a little to the right, do so. But maybe you just need more prop. So hands wider than the mat and just a little forward for some waterfalls. As we inhale, lift from the heart. Exhale, wave the heart through the throat, tuck the chin, inhale, round it up slowly. Looking up at the last. Maybe close your eyes and just feel the whole body working here, this line of energy. We're creating heat. It's very soothing. And we're also getting an upper body toning. And maybe by the third one, you can exhale, lay down that pigeon. You might bring the backs of your hands up under the forehead. You might need to stack one fist. If you're really deep, I know Kathy, you're deep in your pigeon, maybe arms can go long. But what I want you to notice, is your chest really deep? Is there a lot of space from the floor? This is where you want to wedge in an extra cushion or a blanket under the chest. Take time to do it, it's going to be really sweet. And then once you get that support there, 
just exhale, let the shoulders soften. You might feel the back relax even a little more. So when we're holding that chest up high, we're activating a little more through the back side, and we're not relaxing as much because your body's a little more active. As always, thread the needle, revolve. My favorite, sleeping pigeon draping the right arm back onto the leg. Let the wrist fall to the prop of the floor, and then surrender the shoulder and the arm. A bit more compression on that right leg, so maybe only a few breaths if it's too much, or maybe you can sustain this. If you do move around and readjust, just do so with your breath. Remember, if you're at a really deep edge, maybe back off and come to your elbows. If you're feeling a good stretch here, then you might have gone too far initially. Just stay with your breath. Some of you love this pose, so if you want to linger longer here, feel free to do so. But on an inhale, we'll slowly walk it on up, lift from the heart. You can go to down dog anytime, but if it's available, bend your back knee, draw the heel towards you and flex the foot. Maybe that's as far as you need to go. If you didn't have a prop to begin with, you might want one now under the hip. As we inhale, reach that left arm forward and exhale, take it up and back, big toe side of the foot. You might even sweep to a bind here, but you want those, the big toe curling back wherever you are. And a nice stretch to the left shoulder. Your right hand might stay to the side to help lift and open up the rib cage. Press away from the earth, or you find that arm up or bind. Open your front toes, press away from the earth, and try to expand in all directions. You have to get really warmed up to get here, so just spend a few breaths and enjoy. Observing the sensations, the twist, the back bend, the pretzelness of it all. When you are ready, unwind front to back, side to side with control. Curl the back toes under, lift the leg, and then inhale, lift that right leg up and back. It's talking to you, so work it out. Be sure and pedal it out and down dog as well. You'll address other area, address other areas. Move your props to the other side. Optional vinyasa. Nice exhale, let it go. See here? All right, so we'll inhale left leg to sky. Exhale, bend that knee in the air. Reach your toes towards the right shoulder. Pause, press through the left hand, and just notice what you feel. Part of the transition, and then utilize that to help control the flip of the dog. You might stay with just that leg lifted, that's great. Squeeze the glutes, inner thighs. And then we'll look back, we'll reach, use that left side body to inhale the left leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale it up, just calming down. After that back bend, exhale knee to nose. Bring that left, left knee behind the left wrist and wider. That's a little extra core work to bring it in like that. It's a good thing. Slide that back leg back multiple times. So we're letting our body take time to acclimate to this pose. It needs it because it's the piriformis and that's what it needs. Hands a little wider. Inhale, exhale, water falls. Hands off the mat, hands just a little forward. That allows our elbows to go over the wrists. And we are supported for the joints. And when you're ready, just use one of those exhales to follow it all the way down. Maybe exhale it out your mouth or even sigh it out. Huh. Always feels good. Take a moment. Do you need to maybe wedge in a blanket or a cushion up under that chest? any kind of readjusting. Remember, come in at a softer edge, and as you breathe and allow that initial tension to go, you'll feel yourself soften deeper into the pose quicker, okay? So once again, thread the needle, left arm under right, or revolve, right arm under left. 
or that sleeping pigeon where you drape that left arm long back onto the leg. Let the wrist fall to the floor of the prop. Hmm. You might need to right hand up under the side or even more of a prop, a fist. If you're tight in the shoulders, it might pull on the neck, so be careful. If you're fighting it anywhere, utilize your prop to help bring an element of softening and ease to that tension. You're maintaining your ujjayi breath. Remember, no sharp shooting, pain in the knees or anywhere else. Back off or come off the pose completely. No numbing or tingling. This deep, soothing breath. Remember, if you can close your eyes and watch that breath from beginning to end, It'll draw you within a little deeper. All right, so when you're ready on an inhale, we'll slowly walk down up, lift from the heart. Pause, that might be where you stay. Maybe you bend that back knee, draw the heel towards you. Pause again. Inhale, reach our right arm forward. Exhale, take it up, big toe side of the foot. And remember, no, we're not cranking that foot towards us. We're not pulling it, it's pressing away. The toe curls back. Maybe left hand stays to the side or float the left arm up or seek that mind. Press away from your foundation and feel the lift and expansion. You can look up towards the left hand or down the right shoulder and breathe. Just try to feel like you're taking flight, expanding in all directions. When you are ready, unwind with control. Find your way to down dog, lifting that left leg up and back. Work out the keys. Yes, settle it out in down dog. And one last vinyasa. If it makes you happy. Nice exhale, let it go. All right. So this week it is the left foot. We're going to inhale our left leg to sky. And you might even take a few breaths here, but we're trying to get our left foot outside our left hand as controlled and slowly as we can. You might tap the foot a few times. You might even land with the heel first, or you might have to lift that ankle and bring it forward. Flat back first. This side's a little easier. We're gonna bring our right foot outside our right hand and work our way into Malasana squat. So we want the heels down if you can. You might need to roll your mat up, take time, or you can sit on a blanket or a couple of cushions. Nice, feet nice and wide really helps. All right, we're gonna round it down a bit. If we can, you can always stay in sumo squat higher as well. Hello, puppy dog. All right, and we're gonna bring our triceps in front of the shins as much as we can. We're rounded down, over-exaggerated. And then on an inhale, telescope our spine. Make sure you're not over-pressing the knees out with the arms, but the legs are also hugging in. So you've got a nice yin and yang going on. The arms are pressing yet the legs are hugging. Pelvic floor belly strong. If you feel like your neck is overarching, tuck your chin a little bit. And as always, if you don't want this active dynamic state, you can round down and relax. You can take your left arm wide, still connected with the leg, and maybe take your right arm up for a twist. And switch sides. Now, for some of us, this might be a little cranky, but be careful, use your exhale and we probably need the twist. Remember, twisting always releases tension and aggravation. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it when we're in it, but it helps. But it's key to use your exhales. Ha. Ah, yes. Just find your happy place. All right. So, as always, pro or crane pose. No pressure to do an arm balance here, but I do like to give you the option of doing the crow push-ups, which is a nice core workout and activates everything in the pose. So from your squat, 
you'll lift your heels and bring your arms long forward. Key is to keep the hands flat and the heels lifted and the knees bent. So we have to lift our hips, my knees are bent, bring your toes closer together. Press away from the earth with the hands, begin to lift the heels, shift forward, bend the elbows, try to touch the back of the arms with the knees. Pause, what does it take to press up and back where you began with the heels lifted? Maybe do that forward and back, keep looking forward long, try not to tuck the chin. Maybe you venture to stay forward, shift a little more forward. You might lift one foot, point the toes, and use the core to lift the other foot. Yes. No pressure though, I want you to be safe. And you can always keep some cushions forward for your forehead. Beautiful, nice. So from here, one of our favorites, this is where I really miss my music, is we're going to come seated all right, fingertips behind the knees, flex the feet a bit. Work into the triangle between your sit bones and your tailbone. Inhale, lift from the heart, feel the shoulders draw from the ears. And we're gonna find our edge of boat. Your fingers might stay down, your heels might stay down. It's okay if your knees don't straighten. Once again, lift from the heart, feel your backside pressing back. Try not to create tension in the hands. All right, so from here, we're going to bend our knees to one side, reach to the opposite, inhale lengthen, and we'll lengthen them to the side. Bend them in center, lengthen to the side. All right, it's almost like we're rowing a boat here. And now from here, if it's available, you'll go deeper into a little bit of a canoe and see if you can get more to the outside edge of the hip. A little deeper twist, yes. And remember, when you're done, you're done. Go to your back, hug your knees in and let it feel good to you. All right, and we'll go in and hug it in. And as we begin, where we bend our knees, flex our feet, one hand just below each kneecap, and then give resistance. Maybe close your eyes, but draw the face opposite the knees. Bring the neck into the spinal twist party. Notice how it responds. Give a little resistance, you'll get a deeper massage. Nice. And so from here, we're going to set up for your bridge or your wheel. If you do your wheel, I'm gonna let you go there. I'll cue bridge. You can also use your prop under your hips and just take a restorative little bridge, supported bridge. So feet on the floor, knees bent. Feet are about hip width apart and walk your heels towards your fingertips so you might have a little contact. Rock your arms in more to the rib cage, already building it here. Press to the heels, inhale, lift your hips up. Squeeze the glutes and the inner thighs. Maybe rock the arms in closer yet again or interlace, but if your elbows bend out to the side, let go of the hands. All right, lifting those hips, squeeze the glutes. We're gonna lift our heels high. All right, pause here, feel those inner thighs working. Super slowly lower your heels as you try to keep your hips that high, very slowly. And you're breathing, deep ujjayi breath, squeeze those inner thighs and glutes even more. Can you do it more? Yes. Deep, big muscles. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. All right, try to hold this here, but mind your breath. Nice, deep ujjayi breath. All right, so even if you go to wheel, try to acclimate out of this slowly. We're all gonna lift our heels, let go of the hands and very slowly round your spine back down through the tailbone. Very slowly, let the spine have its moment where it goes, oh, what did you do to me? And let it go. Roll that tailbone away. Let your feet come as wide as your mat. Maybe knees touch for just a second. A little more calming. And then arms wide, maybe take the knees side to side, windshield wipers. If you keep your feet as wide as your mat, you'll address the psoas, the IT band, a little more so than if you kept the feet close. Look opposite the knees. Just remember that psoas is a sneaky thing that gets tight and causes hip, back, knee issues. So we wanna to try to address it in this kind of movement here, okay? Beautiful. So we're going to work our way to seated. Let me just check our time here. A little egg roll, rock and roll. All right. That feels good on your back. Okay. 
And we're going to find um, our right knee bent out to the side and our left leg long. All right, if your knee is really far off the floor, you might wedge a blanket or a few blankets up under there. And if that doesn't feel good at all, feel free to keep both legs on. Your left leg might be straight forward or angled out to the side. Let it be what it is, all right? Both feet are active. Forget you have hands. Let's find a few spider fingers and find a few mini waterfalls. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, lead with the heart through the throat, just like pigeon, what we did, tuck the chin, inhale, round it up. Doesn't have to be as big of a movement, just a mini one, but maybe by your third one, you exhale, just feel yourself release in a little deeper. You can reach for whatever you like, or massage something along the way. Maybe it doesn't hurt today, you go, yay. We always forget, only think about things when they hurt. So find gratitude when something doesn't hurt, something you're touching on the body. Breathing. Remember, if you reach the toes, draw the toes towards your face. That's a great stretch for the bottom of the feet. Intensifies a little more in the back of the leg. All right, and we'll slowly round it up, maybe drag the fingers a little, find your lower back, and then we'll slowly switch. Giving any TLC to that right leg that it might need. Set it up, inhale, get about the arms first, find an exhale, a few mini waterfalls. So when our end game is to reach for that foot right away, we lose a lot of softening along the way. So take your time, acclimating in with an exhale, maybe massage, begin to reach, and just gradually work to that point. And notice the sweetness, feeling the body open up a little deeper, sooner. Remember finding gratitude, massaging something if it needs a little more release. And we'll slowly bring it on up and we'll lengthen both legs long. Inhale, exhale, wave the heart forward. Reach for what you like, two breaths. Release the fingers to the floor. Drag them a bit as you inhale, round it up. And we're going to go to our backs. You might just round down or reach the arms and slowly round down as slowly or quickly as you like. You do this one, let your arms go past your ears and just have a moment or two or three or four, go ha. Bend your knees, feet to the floor, and now let's find happy baby. Nice, be sure to flex the feet and have a nice connection between the hands and the feet, all right? We're gonna find the active state first. We're not gonna move right away, we're gonna find the pose first. Draw the knees down and wide, roll the tailbone away. Maybe tuck the chin ever so slightly. Feel the spine really open up here. Soften your gaze and breathe. Notice the active state of this pose. We usually get right to it and start moving instead of finding the pose first. Now, if this interests you in stillness, feel free to stay here. But if you need to begin to rock it out or begin to play with your legs a bit, but just recognizing those areas in our practice where we truly don't take a moment to find the pose, we just go into our rut, our routine, our samskara. We want to be present through every pose and transition, and then maybe vary from there. Yes. All right, so we're going to lower our heels down, hands are to the feet, then let's begin to draw our knees together, take our arms wide. Knees are um, basically over the hips. You might press them away to feel that feet are flexed, arms wide. You can keep the knees bent, legs hugging, or legs long, it's up to you. And with the next exhale, we'll slowly take our knees to the right. You might even look to the left and reach more through that left hand and let the knees go to the right. Take a moment now. If your legs are separated or the right knee's not, not on the floor, use your blanket to wedge in between the legs or under the knee. If your left shoulder is lifting from the floor, you might take a blanket or cushion under the left shoulder. If you can now look towards the left, close your eyes, have a nice inhale and exhale to soften your right hip. Any variation of a spinal twist that you want, feel free. You might place your right hand on that top thigh just for the awareness and the weight. 
and breathe. Watch your breath from beginning to end. Let the mind calm down. And then begin to notice where you feel the stretch from this twist. Giving the body time to find some space. Take our arms wide. We might keep the feet on the floor or lift those legs up. Then we'll bring feet to the floor, lift our hips just to recenter and set them down. Feet off the floor as you like. With an exhale, take the knees to the left slowly. Slowly control it as much as you can. Maybe right hand to sky. Pause. Recognize if you need any props. Because if the knees are separating, then the body's kind of fighting it, it's not relaxing. So give your body the props so you can actually relax. Have a nice exhale, maybe look opposite the knees, yet close the eyes and just notice what the body's feeling. All right, we're gonna slowly work our way back up. Nice. Feet on the floor. Lift your hips. That just allows your central nervous system to recenter. It should be a little bit of a ah oh, moment. Recognize if you need any more movement or any pose. I'm just going to offer up maybe after class. You're present and you're warm. Spend at least five minutes in some sort of inversion, whether it's restorative, legs up the wall, Mindful breath wherever you go, okay? But right now, let's set up for Shavasana. All right, if your lower back's cranky, take time to either place a bolster or a big cushion under your knees, knees bent, or some cushions under your calves, okay? Or blanket under your calves, that will help too. All right, from here, let your feet be as wide as your mat. You might rock your shoulder blades a little closer together, see if that gives you some support. With our feet wide, my favorite part, point the big toes in towards one another and now allow the feet to flop out to the side. You've got to do it a couple of times. You're looking for those thighs to jiggle wiggle. No control here. You're just letting them jiggle wiggle like jello. And feel the thighs and hips and the lower back relax, yes. Do it a couple times and smile if it makes you giggle inside. Smile. All right. When you're ready to be still now, just resolve to be still. Bring your awareness to your mouth and pause there a moment. Just be. Don't do anything. Just observe. The sweetness is about to happen. So allow the lips to part generously and begin to feel that wave of melt deepening. The skin on the face, through the bone, through the muscle. And it just keeps creating wave after wave where you can see the melt through the face and the head. Observing enjoying, maybe even into the hair follicles, definitely the sinuses and eye sockets and inner ears. You might even feel your the teeth and the gums just kind of melt. Beautiful. And from here, when you're ready to surrender the head to gravity, allow it to do so. And then gradually work through the entire body bit by bit, recognizing if you need to linger somewhere a little longer to truly feel the depth of softening and release of tension. And as we do this, this allows the oxygenated blood to just go through the body and cleanse and detox unhindered. Enjoying feeling the control you have of surrendering this tension. Remember no judgment, no commentary, just observation.
recognizing everything that's touching your mat or the floor and everything that's touching the mat or the floor can you allow it to melt like water into sand and just feel that dissipating and melting and disappearing We'll slowly begin to deepen our breathing, as shallow or as deep as a ujjayi breath, it's up to you. But just observe the sensations, whether it's the sound or the expansion. I especially like in the ujjayi breath, that vibration on the exhales, you might feel it resonate through the body. How far can you feel it go? Out to the fingers or just the arms, the legs. That's healing energy. Feel free to remain present with where you are, no movement or if intuitive movement calls you. Notice the energy you feel there. Maybe a long body stretch. Remember, if you're just maintaining an awareness somewhere along the way, stay there, enjoy. If you like hands to heart center or just awareness between the eyes. Remember throughout the day, if a smile is in your heart, allow it to creep to your lips. That will lighten your mood. Namaste.